That's just what it says when uh when you do this. Do I have a fan translation or I'm gonna bring your English? So I think I'm probably I think I'm like three acts into this game. I think there's six acts. I'm maybe about halfway through the game. No touchscreen gameplay, as far as I can tell, so. We use stylus, step aside. Put Chocobo back in the case, because I will play Summerbringer before I play Chocobo again, because we'll play Chocobo maybe next week. We'll see. Unless I get distracted by something else. Distracted by Final Fantasy 13 2 gambling games. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so like I said earlier, it's just very, very, very Diablo-ish. Um, in the sense of, like, you kind of walk around these isometric areas. And, um, let's see. And, uh, you, you pretty much just, like, attack. And when you attack, it is a very much like a single strike thing you do. Um, there's different abilities you have, though, and stuff. I'm playing, like, a Paladin class, though, so I have, like, a multiple, like, a swipe there. I have a double thrust, and then a high thrust, and then a, like, a upper thrust thing. Upper thrust and high thrust are important because this game has, like, a break system similar to, like, um, the Xenoblade games from uh, Monolith Off as well. So, that you can do, well, I'm just dying really bad. Oh, I'm dead. All right. Well... Other mechanic of this game, Dark Souls. <laughs> I guess roguelike probably is the better uh, thing to do. Uh, basically, if you die, you have to go back and get your uh, EXP and stuff. Not that we had any EXP given I just died and that that was pretty much it. So, but Yeah, I'm taking a lot of damage, actually. Oops, that's not what I'm going to do. Okay, and then we could break in the air, and then we can kind of like stab him in the air and juggle him a little bit. And that does extra damage, basically. So each of the, like, when you hit him, you see those exclamation points that, like, is a break meter, basically. And you can get broken, too, as well. And when you're in that situation, you can basically take way more damage than you normally would. And the same thing with the enemies, basically, so. Chain arm. Vitality. That's... That's probably good. The only problem is I don't really use skill on my character, but... Probably fine. Treasure chest. Oh! Um, this game's very zoomed out by default. I'm actually zoomed in a little bit. Um, although you zoom in during combat, so... Okay, launch him in the air! Launch him in the air! He's already dead. But yeah, pretty much once you get him to break, you can either launch him in the air, you can push him back or whatever, just leave him in a spot and just keep hitting him. It's up to you. Depends on what moves you put on, because this game has a pretty flexible ability system where you can kind of like take abilities on and off and they all have different aspects to it, so. Um, there's something I want to do. I think just up is where like I need to go next here. Maybe we might get story stuff here. I don't know. Oh yeah, I had to go in like this temple. I think is what it was. Oh yeah, I was gonna show the zoom. So this is like zoom level two. I press select, it zooms into zoom level three, four, then five, which is way too close to actually play a video game. So, so two, two feels most comfortable to me. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it probably would be better to play this in co-op, but, like, I, I'm not going to find four people to play local, local wireless Soma Bringer with me, right? Like, it's just... Very unlikely to happen, unfortunately, so. Um, it does. It is a shame because that is like a part of these games. But honestly, I have played many of these kind of games like 
on my own, so I feel pretty comfortable in like evaluating them as is. I played a lot of Fantasy Star Universe solo. Fantasy Star Zero was almost all solo for me as well. Although it seems like there's a community for PS Zero. Although I haven't like um does this change colors? I don't remember this being red when we passed by it earlier. Although this basically like gives you different buffs and stuff. I thought it was white, which is like I think a healing thing, but now it's red, which is like I think defense boost. We'll see if we come back and it's changed again. So like in here I can do my sweep and that will hit both of them at once basically. But it's kind of slow. I don't know how much I like it honestly. I, li I like bouncing and then just like stabbing in the air. I think that's like the fun, funnest combo. But there's like nine different classes I think or six, in between like six and nine I think. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and it's uh It seems like they probably play fairly differently. This this guy in particular feels very like kind of cemented down to where he is, where I saw like some of the more agile classes seem like they could kind of run and attack at the same time, which honestly seems like maybe the better way to play this game, but <laughs> but you can't change your class once you start, so. Oh yeah, I definitely played a little bit of DS Wireless back in the day as well in school, so. Oh, that stinks with the outfit stuff. Is that like a fun game on its own? Like I like I I I never really knew the appeal of Dragon Quest 9 per se, but you know, honestly, I think I never really fully understood the appeal of Dragon Quest as a whole. So, I know the like random dungeon map stuff was like a big deal. Oh, mimic. Ow. Uh oh. Um. So I do have like items I can use to heal. So you have quite a few menus that you can jump between in combat, but none of it's like super well like mapped or anything. So you kind of just have to switch between menus. Which it works. It's fine. It's not ideal, but I have no real complaints about it. But yeah, it's pretty much, you know, every act is about like four to five hours of this. I feel like maybe less than that, maybe like three, three hours better. Um, so it just feels a little simple, at least as the Paladin class. Uh, maybe a more movement based class would be a bit more ideal. But it's pretty much just kind of run up the enemy and just smack them until they break and then use an ability that, or they're about to break and then use an ability that kind of exploits that break in different ways. Um, I also have like a D, like defib magic or whatever it's called, or, you know, status effect magic I can cast on them. But with my, with my MP pool as a paladin, it honestly is not like a ton. So I kind of mostly um, stick to melee stuff, so. Oh yeah, I've, I've played the first lane. Lane, lane one is pretty good. I, I'm sure, honestly, that um, oh, I'm class rank three now. Can make get new abilities. What do we got here? Dash and thrust your spear three times. That sounds appealing. I think I will get rid of the heavy cleave or whatever it was for my spear. I'm just not. Clean sweep. I'm just not finding that I'm using it ever. So yeah, it's really flexible. You can just go and switch to whatever. A powerful jumping attack. Um, so this one, like, if I do a break on it, it will, like, knock him down. There's also another, like, okay, maybe it's just, like, the attack animation for it. Let's try this, uh, skewer skill. See how that does for us. And I'll, uh, add our magic over here. Gradually recovers your, your party member's SP in a targeted area. I do like that. I, I've been having SP management issues on Paladin, so 
I'm gonna kind of balance that out with my heel, I think, there. And then also as a paladin, I can do a one one hand sword shield combo, so. Inazuma 11, I still need to try. I don't know if I ever will, but I dream of it. Um, I'm not sure what to do with stats. I found like a wiki that said for paladin, just kind of keep high strength, um, vitality, and magic, but I wonder, like, keeping it so even if that's a good idea. Ability level up. Oh, do I have any class three equipment that I equip equip now? No. I don't think so. I don't recall getting any class three equipment yet. There's some gear you can only equip, like you can see on that one it says rank two in the bottom right hand corner, so. Fire as two strength fire attack. Yeah, we'll switch over to the black necklace. Kind of, um, I don't play enough action adventure games these days, but one thing that's like a weird contrast with like Babylon's Fall in specific is like, um, they have like the, all the workings for like a good flat progression, um, like equipment system with like how the randomized enchantments works and things like that. Um, but they use like gear score levels and that, I think that undermines a lot of the, uh, the progression of that game gear-wise, unfortunately. All right, we're just gonna stab this guy till he's dead. All right. <laughs> uh, Mega Ten Masashi, yeah, seems to be like the only video game thing going on at the moment, or at least the only thing I can tell. Uh, I, I assume they just are kind of in a weird spot, and either they just have a ton of yokai watch money, so they're just taking it slow for a little bit, or. I don't know. Yeah, no English patch yet, yeah. It used to not be free to play. Um, I don't know if, like, if you buy a physical copy, if, it, like, you get, you know, any content through that, that, that would last more long-term than the free-to-play stuff, but I've definitely considered playing it. Unfortunately, it's just not something I'm, like, super, um, super high on my list at the moment. And in general, service-based games are just not really up my alley at the moment. Um, Battle and Fall only gets the exception, really, because I, because they were shutting it down. I was like, okay, well, now I can play your video game. <laughs> More mimics. Get up there. Is this a mimic too? No. Oh, I didn't assign my uh, new ability. Let me do that. Uh, it's... Oh, I need to set the dash as well. Where do I want that dash to be? Um, I kind of. Hmm. I could probably move double thrust to a different palette. Set it to A. Can I move my attack to a different palette? Okay, looks like it. Oh, I have three things now that I'm rank three. Okay. That attack there, and then uh, skewer. here. Meditation we can put here. And I'm a mess, but we'll live with it. So Okay, it says three, but I only have two because I only have two equipped. Okay. Okay. Like a dash. Do I need to attack more after that? Maybe only if I run into it. Run into an enemy. Oh yeah, the Inazuma 11 game, they, they've been working on that too. I didn't know the live service game. I know they went and like kind of redid the video game because they were having a lot of problems with it, so. <laughs> kind of hard to aim it. 
I'll get it though. <laughs> A little slow, like, recovery on it, but. Yeah, the hit hitting things in this game is a little challenging, I will say. Uh, I think people like Bayonetta 3 a lot, I will say. And I think Platinum like Babylon's Fall is like maybe close to a mediocre game, but I think it's fine. Um it has some interesting ideas behind it at the very least, so. Um especially like when you think about it in like the context of the Nier series, so and like what the combat system of Nier has been. Um, I think I still probably like like what was done in the the Toy Logic um, remake of Near better, um, but it's a different type of game, and I think the core concepts of like what Babylon's Fall is trying to do is interesting because it is like more of a expansive um, um, enchantment system, and the enchantments. Again, I think some of these get undermined just by the gear progression and how it's handled, unfortunately. But um, the enchantments are, are really interesting and when they trigger because they are, like, situational in a way you wouldn't really expect. Um, where, like, it's stuff like when you're dashing, like, you get certain stat bonuses and when you're, like, Doing a perfect dodge, you get certain stat bonuses, and then when you're doing like this thing, you're doing... so like you have this like buff thing on the top left corner of the screen, and like the buffs that are up there are always changing, like almost non-stop. You are getting different buffs all the time, and they're going on off depending on what you're doing, how you're moving. So like you can find some really interesting gear setups that like make you play in particular ways that I thought was really fun. Um, it, but the problem I think with the game is just that it doesn't. It doesn't ask you to do a lot, and I think a lot of this comes out of the beta testing phase where people said the game was too hard, and so they basically dumbed it down a bunch, and, like, now it's, like, way too easy. So, like, it's all in Platinum Games for not finding the balance, but, like, it seems like it probably was better before release in terms of balance and, like, how you use those attacks, it feels like, in my, my opinion. Because, like, right now, everything's a little too easy, and so it's, like, really... There's like this really interesting combat system underneath it, but it all gets kind of lost in in the gear progression and how that's handled, in my opinion. And so I think a lot of people got really... They weren't sure... I think people who say that game is way too simple, they're definitely wrong in that... Maybe not wrong, but like... I think they're... I think they have identified the wrong thing as the problem with that game. I think what they're looking at really is the difficulty curve and the gear progression discourages you from utilizing the battle system in the ways it should be used. And so while I would not say it's a simple game at all, I would say it's actually really complicated how you actually should should be playing it probably. Um, the game never really asks you to play it that way, but you can play it that way. But it, again, it just like, for most players, you know, you can't sit there and say, oh, you should have been playing it this way, right? They're going to play it the way they're going to play it, right? So, but that doesn't mean, like, you can't, you know, appreciate for what they tried to do at the very least, too. Toy Logic, Nier, uh, Toy Logic is the developer of the Nier remake. And so, um, I kind of don't really know necessarily, like, Platinum Games advised on that game. So, I assume they advised on the combat. But in my opinion, Automata's combat is pretty not great. Um... And, and a lot of the problems with automatic... Well, I say this as somebody who does not care for Platinum games, I will say, first and foremost. So it's not a, plat a near problem in that regard. It's a Platinum games problem for me. And Babylon's Fall, in a lot of ways, has a lot of the same issues. Although the fact that there's so much gear variety changes some of that. Because my biggest issue with Platinum games is that I feel like most of their attacks don't feel satisfying and it's all very deliberately done so and i think i call it like sparks over weight or something like that um and and it's all deliberately done in that way to make sure you can like combo and things like that right um and people i think 
get enjoyment out of like the flurry of attacks you can do on enemy and things like that. I, I don't get that enjoyment, unfortunately. So, okay, it's the first time I've done something like this. I don't get that um, enjoyment really, unfortunately, so. Um, I wonder how long this lasts. So a near Automata has that problem. Near Replicant remake that Toy Logic did um, finds a very healthy balance, in my opinion, and I I, I kind of hold that one up as like the good near combat game. Because even the original near, I, I kind of was fine with the combat. Like I didn't love it, I didn't hate it, but I preferred it over near Automata or Automata, however you pronounce it. But it wasn't like something that I like think was necessarily better than that game. I think the big change is that they. Um, made it so the pods on your back don't require the main character to be interacting with them. So it frees you up to do other things with the pods that you, while you do combat normally. And Babylon's Fall is built almost entirely off that idea, so. Yeah, I definitely don't blame players per se for, about it, but you know, when you're writing about an essay about a game or something like that, I think it is something worth looking at and highlighting, but it is a shame because I do feel like if the game was just harder, it would be it would be more of a needed thing two things the game was harder and then also they did tier levels for gear rather than gear score gear score i think really hurts that game in terms of progression because you're always changing gear and it makes it really hard to keep track of like your build you don't really keep a build in that game is i think the biggest problem because the game's always changing what you're doing so but like, if you get to end game, I think it honestly would be very cool. But yeah, it take it would take you a while to get to the point that you're not switching out gear nonstop, basically. I wouldn't, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say platinum doesn't like have a huge impact on that combat system. It's like I, it's hard to say, but the reality is, is that they were advising on that game, so I'm sure they had a lot of opinions on the combat system of that game. So. <laughs> What am I doing? There's like 30 billion like drops here. I should have got this first and foremost because that means if I died, I could come back. Um, but yeah, there's like six six different paths here. So yeah, I think style over substance is like a good way to put it too. I'm I'm really interested in that uh, new bayonetta spinoff though. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think Platinum, honestly, I'd ri I like them to do more different types of games, but that's not what people are asking for from them, unfortunately. I think Babylon's Fall is the move in the right direction, in my opinion, in, in terms of like trying a different flavor of game and expanding, you know, you know what they're doing. And I, I don't really blame any company for trying to do live service games these days, so... But, you know, they make plenty of those single player, you know, whatever, whatever character action games, right? It's so, like, I don't, personally, I'm not sitting here like, oh man, gotta have another game like that. <laughs> it's like, like there are 8 billion of those games for Platinum Games. <laughs> but obviously if you're playing every single one of those games, right? Then that's a whole other thing versus someone like me who looks at them and go like, eh, another one like this, I'm good. <laughs> So, Astral Chain is maybe the one I've considered, but again, I look at the combat, I'm just like, I'm not really interested in this. So, I've not tried Soul Cresta, but Wonderful 101 was very good. So, I don't remember what Soul Cresta is. Like, I recognize the name, but off the top of my head, I can't think of it. So. But, yeah. Action RPGs, I think, can be fun. Like, one thing that was kind of fun looking at Japanese reviews for Babylon's Fall is, like, just seeing the different kind of language used around a lot of stuff. Um, and there definitely was, like, a... I think, like, a more forgiving aspect to the live game aspect of that game. The Like, it seemed like most Japanese reviewers were just like, oh, game was solid, kind of mediocre, but fine. I need to not die. Okay, I got out of there. Um, and then, like, the big thing I, th I thought was kind of interesting is that, like, they said it was, like, a game that was, like, good for both casual hack and slash fans and and then the, the then they talk about the, the end game stuff being, like, good for hardcore hack and, hack and slash fans. But even, like, the U.S. reviews, I think generally, other than the ones that were, like, incredibly harsh, I think generally were pretty positive on the combat as well. It was more of just the context of the content combat being, you know, the game that it was in. 
of like um you know the difficulty level and stuff like that and the dungeon design being kind of bland so soul crest oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i remember that i have no experience with shoot 'em ups really so <laughs> i have i've played very few of those in my life unfortunately so um Well, we found a chest. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of this game. Um, I don't love it. I don't hate it. As a Monolith Soft fan, I think it's very interesting. Um, but uh, I would not like ever say to anyone, I think, like, oh, you gotta play. You gotta play Soma Bringer. This is where it's at, baby. Um, it seems like a reasonable like for the time this came out there are a lot of games like this on the ds and the psp and stuff like that and this seems fine if this is what you're looking for and um it, it definitely has like a very xeno gears like like visually i don't it doesn't like come off in in this particular section of the game but visually some of the backgrounds are really nice some of the set pieces are really nice um and the the story i think has been fun at least in terms of like just you know some of the characters, I think, are, are fun, but, like, overall, it's very, 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 very normal in most of the things, so. <laughs> I think the one thing I really would have liked is, like, more of a three-hit combo system thing with, the, like, the regular attack rather than just the stab, but that's where, like, all these abilities come in, right? Where you do the double thrust, and it's like, oh, break, okay, I'm gonna do the thrust upper, and then I'm gonna stab him in the air with the high thrust over and over and over again and do a bunch of damage kind of thing. And obviously each class, you know, again, has their own, their own skill sets, abilities. Like there's a lot of depth here for sure. And like, if you really wanted to get into this game, as I think a lot of people did, especially at the time, um, you know, I think it, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have not been like super loving it though. Just like, this is fine. Um, it's one of those things that like people talk about Babylon's Fall not being great and I feel like this is a better Babylon Fall is a better game than this game at the very least but you know this is a very different time period right this is like 2008 so but uh so the the, the expectations are very different but I'm not gonna make any silver for your comparisons when I do my Babylon Fall video it's just something that crossed my mind it's like oh yeah I'd much rather be playing Babylon's Fall right now but <laughs> but you know I just kind of how these games are and and yeah solid one of those i i've played a lot of solid ones of these in my life and um generally have enjoyed them so i wouldn't even really compare like the like that game to a muso um musos to me are very different games musos are more um i don't even know how to put them Crowd management? Crowd management in like the most extreme way. So I think a lot of games have crowd management, but Muso games are like, you know, I feel like it's always about like, hey, what's the widest attack I'd have? How can I consistently juggle these enemies and like basically, you know, kill them as fast as possible too, right? And then you have kind of, depending on the Muso game, different regions and influence and stuff like that. So it's kind of go around and like, you know, identify the best places to go and do that kind of thing and, and Babylon's doesn't really have anything like that so Made in Origins looks great I, I'm gonna definitely enjoy it this is the natural evolution I don't know if this is the natural evolution of Bella Action games <laughs> maybe to some degree they are maybe but they feel different to me I would not put them in the same category per se but I'm sure somebody could write like a beautiful you know piece about that at some point so <laughs> so yeah but um but yeah. Anyways, thanks for coming. We're going to wrap up. 